we've listened to her now. She's made her mating speech. And we've also heard uh, from the man himself, the, uh, the man whose face is going to be on the ballot come December 7, John Dramani Mahama, live from the UPSA. My colleagues are still with me here on your Lex headquarters. Of course, this time is uh, PM Express, and so of course I have uh, managed to uh, remove Kojo Yangtze. It takes a lot to do that, <laughs> uh, but I've successfully managed that. And as you can see, uh, seated uh, with MFA Pao joining us and uh, the re regular suspects also. <laughs> um, Winston Amwa is with us also. Let me start with MFA Pao because this is the first time we're going to hear her voice. She's been in the background listening to this quite attentively. Now, MFA, what do, you, what do you make of, this is the first time we're hearing her speak in detail. I wonder what your reactions are. Well, she spoke as an academic. It came out, uh, we could all tell that, a rather long and winding beginning. Uh, I was with her, I lost her at some point, and she came on different, uh, because <laughs> this is the first time we've actually heard her uh, long speech like that. But at some point, it felt like she was speaking to her students. But a number of things um, stand out, though, uh, because uh, she talks about herself at some point, where the fanti in her actually comes out, and Kojo would agree, uh, where she brings in uh, the wittiness and all that. But she talks about, I was expecting uh, to hear about the policy, because we, we, we heard that she's led, uh, you know, the policy engagement uh, with the party uh, faithful. But I was hoping that I would get that outlining of the policies that, of course, that the NDC is hoping to put. I heard that in John Mahama's speech, mm -hmm. where he outlines the things that more like the manifesto, what they are hoping, the promises, and what they are hoping to do when they come to power. But I didn't hear that from Nana Jane, of course. She's just a running mate. But she puts out some four factors that she calls, I, I think is the closest will be the policy uh, statement that I would have heard from her tonight. So she talks about addressing aspirations of the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, she talks about that. She also talks about a meaningful quality education beyond access and, of course, just the numbers. Mm. That's a job for the free SHS. You yeah. know, they've always uh, talked about it, not just quality, not just access. Mm. He talks about that also. And then also turning uh, technical education. You know, John Mahama mentioned that she led uh, the polytechnics being turned into technical education or technical universities, the tertiary level. He talks about that also. And then the fourth, provide opportunities that transcend political connections. Uh, merit and not just the whom you know uh, she talks about. But at some point, like I said, uh, she lost me, but I've had to follow just because of the analysis of this. Um, it, it was long, it was winding, but of course, um, inspiring at some point also. She now talks about the COVID fight and asking us all to adhere to it. This is something we've heard over and over again, mm. uh, of course. So I, I wasn't expecting that from her. But of course, uh, those who are watching and listening uh, would hear that advice as well. And then also touches on the more important thing also happening now, which is uh, the violence that has characterized uh, the registration exercise, where she talks about it. And then the time is ripe for change. Um, OK, so that's how uh, she wraps up. And um, I think that largely, yeah, it's something we're expecting from her, but I was expecting more. Mm. But this is inspiring. Yeah. But for me, I've heard you uh, make all the analysis or talk about a couple of things as to what she brings on the ticket. Of course, this is the ticket, the hashtag, the ticket. I'll be sending you on to social media shortly on mm. what people have been saying on the analysis that you put out. But for me, I'm hoping that this choice of picking a woman uh, to partner John Mahama will not just be a facade because we would end up making her just a ceremonial, you know, vice president, should they win. That is what I'm hoping mm. that the NDC will guard against. Mm. And then also, there's this issue of the factionalism in the NDC. Is she able to bridge that gap? Because it, it appears that we are making Professor Jane Nano Pokwajiman as one that holds the magic wand mm. to turn around every fortune of the NDC. Well, they've talked about the educational development that they are hoping that she will bring on board. They've also talked about the integrity. Mm -hmm. You heard John Mahama also talk about it, that she has impeccable character. I heard you in your analysis also talk about the fact that she's incorruptible. Well, we are yet to see any scandal mm -hmm. uh, that uh, she's involved in of a sort. But we've heard also uh, the issues that were raised by the Opoku, uh, Opoku Prempe, the current um, education minister on her fortunes when she was in that sector. Whether she's able to turn around the education fortunes of the NDC, because that will, you know, because we know that the flagship 
of the NPP now is the free SHS. That is something, it's the Trump card mm. that they are keeping so close to their chest. But the issues about she not being vexed in the economic issues and all, we've had the examples of, um, you know, uh, uh, Professor Mills, the late Professor Mills, when he was brought on, of course, he had knowledge in the area of economics. But was he a cut-out politician? And that's the issue that comes up with Jane. You've, I will not belabor mm. the point because you've, you've made all those points. Uh, one thing that um, I was talking to you earlier back, back in, the, in the back room was the issue about her oratory skills. Mm. Whether she can move the people, hmm. the I mean, grassroots. That, that is an important point. Yeah. I mean, I Whether guess if, she mounts, if she mounts the campaign platform, we don't know what will happen if we can have rallies. We mm. are yet to know that we are easing restrictions. We are in the second phase. But before December elections, we would know if we can now have the huge political rallies or there will be different ways of doing this. But if she mounts the campaign platform, we've seen her speak today, very inspiring because it's a different crowd today and all. But the day comes that she has to mount the campaign platform, will it be the same Mami Zubako? But I've heard <laughs> Winston say that you don't need to have the Choboe kind of voice. You will definitely have a John the Baptist card that can clear the way in the, in the form of Elvis Ifrianka, for instance, who will do the Chobwe and the Mahama, Mahama, Mahama. So we'll get to that point and then we'll know. But let me just leave it here for now. But I'm just hoping that we are not picking a woman just because we want to get... Uh, the women to rally well, behind them. I don't know. This is substantive. And so yeah, what I, I don't know if I will vote for the NDC just because they have a woman. But yeah. it is significant that they have a woman as and a running mate. That I will applaud. Yeah, of course. That's, that's yes, what because it's the, the first for the two main political parties. So that's a call that I would applaud. But we don't end up just wanting to have women vote. And yeah. then you bring her into power, or if she just they for win, that purpose. then just for that purpose, then you just make her an armchair vice president, a ceremonial vice president, who just, you know, receives uh, delegations. And really, <laughs> will she have a say? She should be able to have a say as a woman. Mm. And then we will know. If they win. If they win. Let me bring That's in uh, Winston. Win. Winston, so um, that last point of it from makes about, we were looking to see if the personality she brings to the speech, because that is going to be important. Can she mobilize around that? That she galvanized, you feel inspired listening to him. You know, what, what's, your, what's your take? I haven't listened to well, her. You know, Evans, uh, before she spoke, I said that sometimes the longer you last on the campaign platform, the mistakes you make, mm. the shorter you stay there, the better. Her very first five to 10 minutes were instructive. When she got into the long you know, bit about where she's come from, she was trying to connect with everybody to say, I am one of you. I have been there with you, and I know how it feels and all of that. But she spoke too much. It got to a point we just don't, didn't remember what she was saying again. Mm. And so one of the things I said when I was listening to John Mahama, say all the things, was more of giving us an idea why he chose her. And I said to myself, these are things Nana Jane should be saying unless she has more to say. It turned out that John Mahama said too many things which Nana Jane should have been the one saying, okay. particularly because today John Mahama says it's her day. It is true John Mahama would be on the ballot, but it's also true that if you want to send the signal, right signal, about the person you're bringing on board, if you want to say, if you want to communicate that I am with her, it's her. So that everybody takes her on. I mean, you've talked about uh, it's him, not her, mm -hmm. also trending. Yeah. I'm sure if I will get to that. Mm -hmm. How the ruling party or the governing party is doing everything possible to direct attention to John Mahama. Mm -hmm. If the NDC sought to fight that, I think they did themselves a great disservice by making John Mahama speak too much when this was supposed to be known as... You raise an important point. In fact, when we were crafting this show, yeah. we, talk, we called it the Jane, the ticket, solving the Jane and John puzzle. Yeah. And there were many people who said, ah, why Jane and John? Why not John and Jane? And then I make the point to them, we took a cue from the party. If you look at the picture that we've been using, it is a, an official party picture of Professor Jane Opokwajiman in front of John Mahama. Exactly. Right? And so you thought, okay, now they're putting her... In the, line, in the front line, and John Hama is going to be behind. Of course, we know who the candidate is. Yeah. So you, you, what your point you're making is that 
they should have that should have reflected in the event. Exactly. So Jamama should have been um, less de-emphasized. De de yeah. And then emphasize, emphasize. But didn't they do that? I mean, she spoke the longest, no, I thought. Well, but you see, you see, uh, uh, Evan, she spoke the longest. But let's put this to test. What did she say? What did John Mahama say? Okay, the, 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 you're, not, you're talking the, about the content. Yeah. The content. Okay. You see. Your mama was more substantive policy. Good. But you see, okay. when John Mahama says, I don't want to say much because she has a lot to say. But she said, but he said all. Oh. That's the whole okay, point. Okay, I get your point. And so, and so for me, for me, I mean, she spoke very well. And for those of us who like a lot of argument, you know, you would want to listen to the end. You get to enjoy the conversation. It reminded me of, uh, you know, my lecture rooms at the University of Cape Coast. But hey, this is a political well, platform. Quickly, what, what was the biggest takeaway for you from what she said? Well, um, it was, first of all, it was about, um, you know, what this meant for women and the youth. The youth okay. policy for me was great. The four points that she put out there was great. One thing also, she tried as much as possible to remember all of us, her backgrounds. Mm. That is key. Mm. And that would, you know, give credence to the point you made earlier. About the grassroots About connection. the grassroots bit. That despite the fact that the national chairman says she's been brought in for the middle class, you also can't write off totally the importance of the grassroots. So she tries to connect with everybody. Mm. That's good. She does very well with that. But keep it short. Let us leave with so many takeaways. Yeah. Let us not leave struggling to remember. But that what point you, you made about trying to get us to see her as I'm one of you. Yeah. I remember there's a part that she says, I want to be sitting with you by the roadside, Thank by you. the farms, yeah. in the marketplace, in your offices, uh, you know, like all the, you know, the places that you, you don't think that a professor will go to. Yeah. She says, I want to be there with you. But then there's COVID. And so we'll find a way around it. And she kept on emphasizing her, her very humble beginnings. I mean, the people in Commenda, he, he talks about, you know, the, the folks, the, you know, some, some woman, an Alavagnon, you know, yeah. that, you know, and then she spoke some ever there. I heard the new email, you know, exactly. Right? I don't know what she meant by that, but I, I mean, if I can, <laughs> if I can rest tell her. Peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, she, uh, she wanted to stress the point. I, I made this point. I made this note. She wanted to stress the point that I am one of you. And she was alert to who, what the NDC is, and as a party. And so I'm one of you. Could you what's, what's your take? Well, I think that somebody messed up. OK. You know, Professor Nanajeno Pokwajiman's address in itself was beautifully delivered. Mm. I think she spoke, she, she walked through the language in, in beautifully, effortlessly, as you would expect of an English professor. But somebody messed up the communication mm. and gave the nation the impression that she was coming to give a policy statement. Good point. But in reality, what she had prepared it was herself an official to do, statement to yes. announce the event. But in reality, what she had prepared herself to do was to come and endear herself to the nation in her very first mm. address. That was her plan. And if we had understood that to be her intention, we would have marked her 10 over 10. Mm. Because she did that. You're right, you've given all the examples of the ways in which she sought to endear herself, to relate to, to the Ghanaian, the typical Ghanaian, wherever you may be, whoever you may be. And she spared a thought for everybody. So if we had understood that she was not coming to announce any policy, she was simply coming to introduce herself mm. to the electorate, we would have marked her 10 over 10. But somebody said she was coming to give policy, uh, a policy statement. Mm -hmm. And John Mahama did that instead. So this is where our confusion Mm. is now birthed. Mm. Now, this is a mistake they can't afford to keep repeating because this is somebody who is introducing herself. You could even tell that there were a bit of nerves at the beginning. These are all expected, mm. by the way. It's not unusual. It's your very first time on this national mm. stage. Yeah. So the expectation and, and, and struggle is... struggle with the, with the teleprompter, you see. Yes. You know, at a point, she had, thing, to, yeah. she had to uh, rely on her notes. So these are normal. But because of the initial miscommunication, it has created a situation where we are now all a little bit confused about what we've just observed. And yes, indeed, I agree, it went on for quite a while. But if we had known from the very beginning what to expect, that she was going to spend time touching on everybody and everything, we would have settled into it and probably enjoyed it even more than we did. Mm. One more thing, uh, and I think it's true. 
that when you're not a politician yet, it shows. At a point, she said that she was encouraging everybody to follow the government protocols. Mm -hmm. Follow what the government is telling us to do about COVID-19. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but there is a better way of saying it. Mm -hmm. You could have said, follow what the Ghana Health Service is telling us. Follow what the health professionals are telling us. But she chose to say, follow what the government is telling us. And there is a political connotation to that, which I'm sure she would have preferred to avoid. Okay. But all in all, good start. Okay. MFA, let's uh, do some of the messages that we are getting from social media now. Um, a lot of it. So let's go through them. Interesting uh, messages. Um, I'm sure we'll go on uh, Facebook. If I, my screen is um, available now, we'll just go on social media now. Um, some of the messages uh, that are coming in. Okay, so we're on Facebook, and uh, this one from Patrick Reid, who says, there's no puzzle here. It's an open book, uh, because we had mentioned that we are solving the puzzle. So we'll go down more uh, to some of uh, the messages uh, that are coming. So this one from uh, Fie Emmanuel Gutzman says, uh, GO1, our Doreen Minister for Con Constellation Affairs, who will not witness any dead good syndrome, okay? Uh, so Nanase says, why is the former president always hiding at the back? of his running mate, I don't understand. You tried uh, talking about that earlier. Uh, Chrissy Nobel says they will collapse our education sector. Chrissy Apiakubi says, tell him to stop hiding at the back of uh, the woman. It's, uh, is he afraid to be the flag bearer? Pakwesi says, the hype around her is dead and no one can resurrect. Uh, and it's him, not her. That hashtag is trending yeah, on Twitter trending, yeah. as well. And this one from Nanekia Fodjo says, hey, Ghana party. Is it by force for GM to smile? Jesus is Lord. Okay. So uh, these are comments uh, that have come up when we put up the, the artwork, the tickets mm -hmm. solving the Jane and uh, Jane puzzle. So we go on Twitter now. Uh, it's trending number one. Uh, Jane oh, and Jane, 2020. Okay. Finally. Uh, yes, it's trending. And then the, it's him, not here, is also at number three. And John Mahama is also trending at number five. Mm. So that's what the Twitter trend uh, looks like uh, at this point. We'll take some of the comments uh, on the it's him, not here, and then also uh, the Jane and uh, JM and JM uh, 2020. So NBC official Ghana starts it. Okay, but we'll go down. Uh, so Mr. Dumelo, oh, John, John Dumelo, Dumelo has, been, has tweeting. been tweeting. He says, proud to be part of this historic moment. Hashtag JM and JM 2020. And some of Kujato Ablako, of course, the, the deputy, he was uh, the deputy education minister when JM uh, was the education minister. No, He's no, also no, been social tweeting. Uh, uh, no can, social can distancing you, there. Can I ask you a question, <laughs> for, yes, What about her look, though? I, what she wore today. I, it's something that we've been talking about. <laughs> and uh, it's beautiful. I, I, classy. She's just there. This is the quality of uh, Irani Mates, I should say. She's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Resplendent. <laughs> I haven't seen her look this beautiful before. Yeah, Ta really. Like, she's beautiful. But this hey, is, don't say this is a style let's I'm listen, going to copy. Let's listen to the <laughs> it's a style I'm going to copy. And there's, oh, yeah, going to copy that style. Yes, there's a part that uh, we can see right now. Uh, we've been talking <laughs> about it with the boys. Now, this is what now Momolati says. Minimum 30% of all appointments in the next John Mahama government. No, that, that, that's thing is fact checked because in 2012 the 2012 manifesto of the ndc yes they said that they will they, they said they put the target 40 percent 40 percent now it's been four reduced. years to implement mm -hmm. that it the didn't happen is, what did he do it didn't happen in 2020 he's now he moved the, the target 40 of 40 to 30, to 30. Exactly. that is something that going for from tomorrow we need to a lot look of scrutiny at is going to come on to exactly. that now mm -hmm. felix has also been tweeting on that and then uh, we are the revolution i think this is edema Magbana, such an excellently organized event a party ready and organized for power some of the messages um a lot of them yeah. and um all eyes have been on the election headquarters uh, tonight huh? uh, on facebook everywhere uh, they've been watching and listening to the analysis people have been tweeting about winston and the rest of you well um, the thank analysis. you mfa thank you kojo thank you winston kojo and winston i don't envy you we're going to be on the morning show tomorrow <laughs> with all this again <laughs> this is pm express when I return i'm going to be joined by um uh, a, a political marketing analyst. We're going to go live to the ground where Araba Kumisi and Parker are standing by with some live reactions for you also. Stay with me because PM Express is live right after this quick break.
Okwajima is a new benchmark. On your vice president, Ntin Kutin or Okoye, no, or by a Ghana or man paying. This woman capable of being described as the president of the republic is one of the most disgraceful comments by the majority leader in parliament the track record as minister of education necessarily will become the other side of the coin she's sitting atop an organization which is not very friendly to women we're not choosing her just because she's a woman there's a lot that she's done to be worthy of being nominated it's your integrity that earned you this position it wasn't the size of any gun or the size of your account we will justify the confidence we should report to us So, of course, the Jane and John puzzle, I think for now, you probably should have your own understanding of what the pieces are to this particular jigsaw and to this particular puzzle. I guess the missing link has not been provided by the woman herself, uh, Professor Jane uh, Nanopoko Ajiman. I want to bring in uh, Dr. Kobi Mensah with the University of Ghana Business School, political uh, marketing strategist, who joins us uh, live via Zoom right now. Prof, I'm pretty sure you followed the, the speech um, and the event itself. Your your reaction? Thank you, Evans, and thanks for having me. Well, let me say that I'm not prof yet. Thanks for that. Oh, but I'm sure very soon. <laughs> yes, that yes, yes, yes. Very soon, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. I think that yes, uh, we have been following you know uh, the the campaign. Obviously, today's speech. Obviously, uh, from the day that you know John actually announced her candidacy, uh, we have been following it. Quite a lot of people have been following. Those who are political and apolitical have been following the conversation. Now, if you listen to her, which I think today a majority of us had opportunity to listen to it extensively, perhaps you would actually understand the diversity question that NDC had actually you know been putting across, saying that they have actually been the forefront, at the forefront of diversity, at the forefront of inclusion. And suddenly her, you know, uh, what her speech today actually mapped the scope or some scope of the campaign's message. And you could actually see that, you know, from the kind of, you know, utterances from the sentences, some of the, you know, phrases or some of the, you know, key issues that she actually highlighted. So certainly it's been somehow, I, I should say that it's been very exciting watching I'm not sure, though, that it was too lengthy because, you know, that the expectation of, of her by people, you know, and, and as a result, she needed to actually speak at that length so that people can actually evaluate her from the perspective that they want to see whether she merits the ticket or not. So let's, let's start from the soft sides before we come to the substance, right? I mean, because you're a political marketing uh, person, let's start from the soft side. One yeah. of the key things that she had to do um, and go into an election is must inspire, must galvanize, etc. that you look at. You watch her, did she do that for you? Did she come across as somebody who has what it takes to stand by herself on a campaign platform and connect to people and convince them about the party's message? Correct. I mean, she does that in, in a various ways. First of all, if you look at the way she was swinging, I mean, when she came to the podium, I think the beginning, the takeoff, which is expected of everyone, especially in her position, and you know, having been named, you know, historically as one of the, you know, uh, uh, what you call uh, female that could actually occupy the highest office in this country. You know, you could see the tempo. She took some time to actually, you know, uh, raise the game to the level that she did. And I think that towards the end, rather, you saw a very, you know, a, a post. I mean, a, a, a very well composed, you know, candidate. And so you realize that from the beginning, she was a little bit mild, and then she went into a very you know, tough-looking, tough-sounding in the position. So if you thought that she was, obviously her demeanor actually shows a very you know, calm person, but of course, in the delivery, in the oratory, you could see the other side of her. That actually brings in the diversity in terms of you know, her composure, in terms of her demeanor as well. So I think that it was good to demonstrate that aspect because obviously people thought that perhaps she could be a walk in the park uh, when it comes to, obviously, comparison with Baumia. But I think Baumia would definitely have a run for his money. Uh, looking at the way that she actually transitioned 
from a very you know a, a very calm position into a very high tempo uh, delivery so suddenly she actually brought that and then secondly you look at the 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 attire i mean the the dress in a coat that she actually put on completely connected and actually moving her from the professorial look that you would expect her to to be obviously if you look at her composure right from day one she hadn't actually looked your quintessential professor so mm -hmm. Definitely connection with the ordinary people, with the ordinariness as she speaks about with the diversity or the diverse, you know, population or the diverse demographic that she speaks about. Certainly her outfit actually connects that as well. And then, of course, if you listen to some of the word choices, at some point, she's actually bringing a game to the MPP, actually talking about ex exceptionalism mm -hmm. would not be tolerated, talking about people's, everybody's grandparent or great grand everybody's you know uh, descendants uh, or what you call ancestors have actually contributed to the Ghana that we have and talking about the artificial borders that had already been created by the Europeans and the deepening of that border uh, uh, the artificial borders and the worrying aspect of that yeah um and mm. Yes, I think we may be having a challenge. Yes, Doc, please proceed. I think we lost you briefly, but yeah, proceed. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, in terms of her connecting with the, with the audience, mm. you, could, you could actually see that from very many you know, uh, angles, from the speech, from her, you know, uh, I mean, from her uh, words, the, the, the attire that she put on, and certainly from her composure and the delivery of her of of speech was, was definitely connecting in very many points that we are talking about. I mean, uh, the, you, you bring up the sector of Baumia, and then you say that he would give Baumia a run for, for his money. That, that, I guess, is a big one. I mean, um, Baumia, yeah. the current manifestation of Baumia, Dr. Baumia that we know, has been the creation of, what, eight, eight, plus, eight plus years, from 2008, 12, 16, of course. I mean, quite, quite, it's taken him more than a decade to build this persona. Mm. You're saying that Professor J Nano Jinopokwa Jiman, in the last few weeks, um, you watch her today and he could, she could give Baomia a run for his, his, his money? Certainly, certainly. You know, uh, don't forget, you know, Evans, that she's a professor. I mean, she's in the classrooms. And as, you know, one of your panelists was talking about, it's as if she was speaking to her student, which I disagree because I think that it's natural for you know uh, people who actually at the forefront of speaking engagement. You included people who actually are to, I call them talking industry. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility of bringing that your your you know oratory power you know on the stage when you take the stage. So don't forget, although there is no appre apprenticeship for presidency, she's been a professor. She's been presenting at you know uh, what you call conferences. She's been presented every day in the classrooms. So certainly she's going to have that flair. Whereas Baumier's role in the past, uh, without you know the political you know, angle of it, obviously it is not as extensive. Although she he's also been a lecturer before, it's not as extensive as you know Professor Nana Jane you know uh, experiences. So certainly she's going to give Baumier uh, Baumier you know a run for his money. I mean, if you look at the way Baumier actually you know delivers and throw punches which in many ways, if you look at how John Mahama and Emisata actually responded to that in a very calm manner. And if, if you listen to about, uh, what uh, uh, President, former president, you know, John Mahama's uh, oratory style, he's always linear. But there's mm -hmm. a contrast from you know, James, uh, Professor Nana James' you know, uh, approach. Mm -hmm. she, she goes and then she actually peaks in terms of her tone and pace, mm -hmm. and that actually could actually give you that sense that she was not going to be that you know linear approach to accepting Baumier's kind of antics, you know, on, on the political platform. I don't think that's that would be the case, and that's exactly what she, yeah. she demonstrated. Let, let, let's talk about coming into this. I mean, our analysis had said that one of the things that she would need to yes, she's a professor, um, but one of, but but she's on a professor on the ticket of a party that is um, mass in this appeal, the NDC, and, and appeals to a certain class of people, right? Mostly, uh, predominantly. And she will need to also show that she can connect to that base as a middle class professor. And I saw her make references to her very humble beginnings. 
and how she want to sit with people on the streets, in their farms, in their homes. Did, you, did he convince you, if, if you were listening to her as a typical NDC grassroots supporter in a village somewhere across the, in, 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 uh, in, in the hinterlands of the country, did she convince that, in fact, I am one of you, and I am, I am as NDC at heart and in reality as you are, and I identify with everything that you represent? Did he connect to that base? Did she connect yeah. to that base? Certainly. I mean, uh, Evans, if you look at her demeanor, for example, and I talked about her demeanor and her composure, she's no way, you know, coming across as your quintessential professor. I mean, by if, if you, even if you don't know her, and the first time that you, you see her, certainly she would not come across to you as a professor. So that's the first point of connection. And then the kind of, you know, uh, words that she uses, her language, you know, suddenly the kind of language that she employed, whether be it because it's a political platform or not, the kind of language that she employs when she's speaking does not come across to you as a professor because, of course, she's a professor of English, but you find that she uses the very, you know, ordinary language, the very simplistic language that people can really appreciate and not to actually put her on that pedestal as a professor. And that's a very good thing for her to, to actually do that. Because as you said, you know, there was a there was a concern that she may not be able to connect to the grass grassroots of the NDC party, which is very much you know not your typical you know intellectual base as people actually uh, argue. Although it doesn't mean that there are no intellectuals in the party, I think she definitely does that job. And don't forget also about you know uh, the the idea that she also comes across as somebody who is not. A native politician. And when I say a native politician, that is somebody who is not, you know, a, 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 what do you call it, your quintessential politician. She comes out as a very ordinary individual that is actually addressing, you know, uh, what do you call it, people. So I think that these characteristics actually go go on to actually connect to the party base, but also broadly to connect to the voters, you know, uh, of this country. So I think that she she does really well on that grounds. Okay. Of course, what people were really looking at is whether she would have that, you know, uh, the, the oratory power to actually connect to almost everyone in terms of, you know, raising the, the, the campaign tempo and in terms of, you know, calming where it is necessary. I think that the delivery today actually, you know, kind of touched on these points for me. And I think that it's a good thing that she had actually, you know, demonstrated that, that yeah. ability. Let, let's talk about the substance of what she said. So we've dealt with this what's fun. Did she convince you on substance? I mean, we know she's a professor, right? I mean, but, and she makes the point, this is a campaign that will be run on track record. And she herself has a track record in, as education minister, but the man whose face is going to be on the ticket, Joe Mama, has a track record as well. Now, in delivering the policy, mm -hmm. um, I mean, first of all, that quick comment about uh, that she was supposed to be delivered a policy statement, and yet, did you see her do that? Or Jomahama took that shine? Well, I don't think that it, he, she came across as announcing policy, which I thought if she had done that, it would be a mistake. Because don't forget, people have actually been questioning why you know, uh, it looks as though the campaign is making as though she's the one leading the ticket. And so any policy announcement must come from the ticket, the head of the ticket not the, the deputy or not the, the, the second on the ballot. So certainly she didn't do that. Now, whether she actually marked the scope of the campaign message, and I think she did, uh, because the idea that you know, uh, some exceptionalism in the system, some are actually being called citizens and some are not being called citizens, the idea that everybody's, you know, uh, what do you call, great grants or ancestors have contributed to this Ghana and therefore everyone is important. These are key campaign messages going forward, I think, from NDC's in a corner. You're going to hear a lot about this. And perhaps her candidacy is actually being defined within that frame, going beyond you know, the gender question or the demographic questions, but you know, looking at a broader campaign messaging question, which she actually defined that in her presentation, you know, the kind of thing that she said. So for me, I think that, yes, uh, if she had done the policy announcement, it would have been a mistake because it would have actually kind of uh, connected to the criticisms 
that already the campaign is having that she, she, she's actually leading. And by the way, I don't think that the picture, the campaign you know, uh, uh, image where she's actually leading is really you know, a, a, a bad thing per se. I think that people are mis misconstruing that or miscalculating that because if you look at most of the, you know, uh, what you call photos of men and women, especially partners, which in this case, they are not necessarily partners, but they are partners for a political you know, uh, positioning. It's always about the females leading and then the male actually behind. And most of the social pictures, you know, if you look at it, majority of it, that is the, the arrangement. Yeah. So being a candidate, being a candidate and being at the back of her instead of being in front, I think it sits with our cultural, yeah. social culture. It does. I mean, and, and don't we, I don't, don't, we, people... don't we always say ladies first? I mean, we always say that's ladies correct. first. I mean, I guess that is playing into that. But I'm grateful, um, Dr. Uh, Kobe Mensah there, of course, uh, joining us with this analysis. And this is just a tip of the iceberg. There's a lot to analyze and unpack. And I'm sure tomorrow, stay with us here on election headquarters. We'll bring you more of this. My name is Evans Mensah. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Because